Sorry guys. So as you can see, I've already got the bumper off. Gave it a good clean. The only tools you should really need is grinder, ruler, and a pencil. I'll be using them to mark out the cut I'm gonna do, which is essentially this little bend line in the body there, the whole way along in a straight line. Then from this corner here, depending on what sort of rear bar you're going for, you normally just go to this corner here. But if you're making something a bit more aggressive, you might go all the way over this point, but I'm just gonna go from this section here just before it starts to round off. But I'll um, draw it out and then give you my exact measurements and then obviously copy it on the other side and then start cutting. I just finished marking mine now. As you can see, got a nice straight line there, whole way along to this corner. And from there, mine basically ran through the center of this hole down to this, which I marked exactly 40 millimeters off the end. And you really want this cut to be dead straight even with all these bends in it, because when you go to plate it off, it's gonna make life easier if it's a nice straight cut. And one other thing I will mention is, I've already done it on mine, but you wanna take your tail lights out and make sure that there's nothing sitting in this area on both sides that when you're cutting, you're gonna hit. So it could be cables or it could be um, like, uh, what's it, uh, air conditioning lines or whatever they are, because I know in some cars, in like the G or the GQ that have the rear air con, they run the lines through that. So just double check that before you start cutting or you'll be in a bit of trouble with that. So I'm pretty much right to start cutting now. So just finished that first cut because there's a couple of skins in behind there. You probably have to do a little bit of cutting and pulling away. So I'll do a little cut here. Try pull this whole piece back so I can do the cut on the inside skin. I've just pulled away a couple of those outside skins. You can see it's sort of a bit awkward because to get into these bits, You'll sort of have to try and match that angle as good as you can. Same with here. So that when you do the plating, it all matches up. But if anything, you want to leave a bit extra on. See the plate up there and you can keep taking some away. Because you can't add metal back on really. I accidentally went a little bit deep here on that spot. But that's fine, I can touch that up. Um, the other thing that might make it a bit easier, I do have one but not here at the moment, is using a long metal recipro blade because then you could cut through that, run your blade down here and it will probably cut this skin too, but you should be fine with the grinder, so I'll keep cutting away. I've just finished cutting all that away, that's the end result, you can see when I line it up, all the cuts and that angle all line up in one, which is what you want. On that angle there, it all lines up pretty well. So a bit of two mil steel, and I should be able to weld around the whole perimeter of that. Not sure if I'll be able to get the welder in behind there or not, but we'll see how we go. And now I've just put the sanding disc on the grinder. I'll go give all those edges a whack, give it not, make sure it's nice and clean. I'll just give it a nice little paint for now and start making up some templates. I just gave this side a wash out, cleaned out inside all those panels that are now open. I'm gonna wait for that to dry. I'll give it a good lick of paint everywhere and then I'll start doing the templates. But for now, I'm moving on to this side, which is pretty self-explanatory. I'm just gonna repeat the same thing. Um, so yeah, I'll pick the camera back up once this side's cut and both sides are painted and I'm going to start doing the templates. 
Alright, it got pretty dark after that last clip last night. So it's the following day. Obviously cleaned out everything I cut and um, gave it a spray on this side. Come up really nice. Same on this side. All cleaned and painted. Obviously when I go to actually weld the plates on, I'll sand, I'll, yeah, I'll grind some of that back so you get a nice weld on it. But for now, it's just to make it not rust and look neat. So yeah, I can start making up some templates for the infill panels on both sides and weld that up. I'm getting ready to cut these plates now. I've just cut a piece a little bit bigger than that section, held it up against the cut and used a colored pencil to mark it the whole way around. So now I'll go in, I'll cut this some with the grinder and some with the jigsaw for the weird angles and stuff. And then I'll give the sand cause it's got a bit of rust on it and then I'll tack it up and weld it off. Gonna be a bit hard to sort of show you one handed but this is the piece for the right side. Basically sits up like that roughly. So I'll be able to weld along that top piece, down the side, around the back, pretty much the whole perimeter of the whole thing. And then I'll sand that back and they'll go in from the inside of the car, put some sealer and stuff in the inside, paint it all and it should come up pretty good. Because I've been driving around for a couple of days and this lets in a lot of noise because this pretty much leads straight up behind the uh, tail lights which then goes inside so you definitely don't want to leave these open alrighty so I've got the plates ready got the car prepped but I've decided I won't weld it on just because I don't have enough experience and because it's actually getting welded onto the body of the car I just don't want to risk doing a shit job so I've brought the car down to my mate's shop Lumper Motorsport down in Warrnambool uh, he's a gun fabricator so I'll let him do his magic on it and I'll show you how it goes and then I'll just do all the grinding and the finishing sort of thing and painting it. Got the car on the hoist now. Matt's just starting to pack up this first one. Alright, so didn't feel much at Lumper's shed but got the plates welded in. I've just got to grind it back a little bit. I won't grind it too much because I want to keep the strength in it. And then I've got some seam sealer, which I'll paint on the outside and then cover that with paint. Um, that's what this side's looking like. And then I've also got some expander foam that I'll put on the inside just to make sure there's no noise getting in or water or anything, just to sort of seal it up from the inside. And then that's the stuff I got from for the seam sealer bit of paint and a cheap little paintbrush and I've also got an off cut of my sound deadening stuff that I put on the inside too and then it should quieten it right up and then that's pretty much job done just finished up with the seam sealer on this side obviously it doesn't look super nice but it does the job and it's more about practicality with this stuff gets in all the little holes if there are any in the welds and also adds as like a dampener to the noise. So I've done that pretty thick coat the whole way around. All underneath. So this side's fully done. Just wait for that to dry. And just for reference, I got one of these tubes, 150 milliliter tubes. And I only used about half of that one to this side. So I probably only needed one to do both sides, but it's only about $18 a tube, so not too bad. I don't have anyone here to film me at the moment, so I'll try to do this one-handed. But basically all I did was cut the end of this off, so it's got a big, thick nozzle. And I just ran that around the whole perimeter. It, it does spread out pretty well, so you don't need too much. I probably put a bit too much on my first lot. Just do that the whole way around. And then... I've got a little thin paintbrush and you basically just spread it out, paint it on. This stuff should help against rust as well. And then I did all underneath.
and you just want to make sure you keep going back and forwards over the welds so it spreads and pushes itself in. That's pretty much all I do. So I'll put the phone down now so I can make sure I've done it all. And then I'll let this dry and I'll show you what it looks like once it's dry. And then that pretty much wraps it up. Both sides are fully done. It's been a couple of days and I've done a fair bit of driving and can't hear any noise getting through. I've washed it a few times and there's no water getting through. So it's worked well. Pretty happy with the result. Got a little sneak peek of the bar I'm making to suit it, which I'll be doing another video on. But for now, that pretty much wraps up this video. Hopefully it's handy for anyone looking to do a quarter chop in the future. Thanks for watching and make sure you like and subscribe. Catch you next time.